What's up there, SEO pros? We're uh, live here with, is it Bill or Will? Or Will? Bill, Bill's, Bill's fine. Okay, so we're, we're live with Bill. We're doing an audit right now, local SEO audit for uh, this, uh, this website right here. Um, as usual, I just go ahead and start with the Screaming Frog Crawl. Start crawling all the URLs. Um, and then actually let me get into Chrome because I don't have any of my browser extensions. All right, let me cancel out of there. Cool. So first things first, um, we want to make sure that we're uh, at some point switching to SSL. Uh, small ranking factor right now. Um, basically, the HTTPS isn't up. It's just HTTP. Also, yes. the, ti the title tags, uh, since we're targeting, targeting local, we would want to include our qualifiers for uh, whatever location we're at um, so we can rank higher for that area. So page opti or sorry, title tag optimizations. Um, for home page including area um, and then also your main keywords are going to be on your home page so I don't know if this is uh, the main t uh, keywords for that target area but we might want to spend some time um, working on keyword mapping and what that means is like uh, just taking all of our main keywords and then figuring out what they're going to look like across the entire site architecture um, sounds more complicated than it is it's really just keyword research Nice. Yeah, I saw that. So we're going to go into Mozbar. Um, so meta descriptions, uh, 97. We should probably get all of our uh, meta descriptions to at least 155 characters. Um, meta keywords is deprecated, so we just want to remove that. Yeah, they got the, the keyword stuff I saw um, as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just that Google doesn't even look at this anymore, so it's just there's really no point in having it. Um, the other thing is that we have uh, two H1s, and we only want one H1 per page. Um, and the H1s are basically just going to um, replicate what the um, title is saying. Oops, there we go. Um, no bold italics. You can use these as like extra relevancy signals. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, general attributes, we got a 1.4 second load time, which is pretty good. Uh, link metrics, um, we can just log in and see these really quick. I have a quick question about uh, PageSpeed, if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, I was on uh, GT Metrics and uh, and also Google PageSpeed. They, um, the GT Metrics score was uh, like 2 point like 8 seconds, which is good. I, know, like, I, think, I think it's 3 and below. Uh, is, is pretty solid. However, the uh, the page speed, yeah, the, the grades are poor. So, would that affect ranking in Google's eyes, or does it not matter because the page speed is under three seconds? Yeah. So, I mean, anything above a two second load time is not a good thing to have. Um, in terms of the page speed, you might have like a two second load time, but it might take longer to render in terms of like, um, like I don't know, you're above the full JavaScript or the uh, the server response time because you can see the page response times are pretty low it looks like um, yeah. but you can see things like uh, uh, reduced res a server response time which is 0.82 seconds so um, okay. honestly this happens when you're not really on like a premium hosting plan I don't know what you're I don't know what you're using but I um, for all my sites I use something called a uh, WP engine um, yeah. and also they do like this really easy migration where it takes like an hour but then you have everything migrated over to their hosting is like blazing blazing fast and they also also give you free SSL, um, so you would take care of those two problems at once. It's a uh, it's a WordPress site. I'm not sure exactly uh, the hosting. So. Yeah, so WP Engine. I mean, we could check it like who is with a who is lookup, but um, you might want to look a little bit more into the hosting. Um, also, you can see these images can be compressed by a lot more. So I use something called a Smusher. Um, it's a yeah. it's a plugin, and yeah. it does mass image compression, which is going to help yeah. a lot with those load times. Wait. Um, Do you tend to use uh, CDNs as well? I don't really recommend them unless you're like going to be doing like a huge site with like tons of video and multimedia. For local sites, I don't think CDNs are necessary. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, there's other things you can do like enable compression and stuff for all the CSS and uh, JavaScript and whatnot. But um, it, a lot of this has to do more with design, which I'm not really the kind of guy to like. 
um, be talking to you about this stuff. So um, I would I would work with a good web designer. Um, we're trying to get somebody in house, but right now it's like um, pretty much the only things I can look at is like these basic things. That's fine. Yeah, the rest is for coders and developers. Um, so it looks like your page authority is at twenty three, um, which is okay, uh, especially for local. Uh, it looks like you are using schema and OG data, but let's see what it looks like. So you're using duplicate website markup, which I'm sure is included by the theme or something. So um, only want one website markup. Um, and then for the home page, since you're a local business, you want to use local business markup to show Google that you're a local business. It helps. It helps you make a makes it easier for you to rank um, locally. Will you, will you further explain that? Dumb that down for me. Yeah. So um, basically, you can put in your website that you're like a local business. And Google will pick that up and be like, oh, um, these guys do whatever the local business says. So like if we go to, um, we'll type in like here, this is an iPhone repair site that I ranked. Right. Um, we'll go into here, plug them in. So, um, this is giving me a warning because uh, Squarespace started automatically in pr including schema, uh, schema code, which is really annoying, so I can't remove that. But um, if you look at this, you can see like um, we're showing Google like um, if we do like a preview. Um, basically, this is what Google's pulling into its da its system, its data or its algorithm, whatever you want to call it, um, and it'll look and say, oh, this is their phone number, this is their address, this is the description of their business. And if you start marking things up correctly, you can start getting a lot of really good stuff happening. Like, um, for instance, if we type in my name and we go to like reviews, um, you'll see I have like star ratings underneath my search results because that's all schema. So Google actually okay. pulls this data and is able to show people um, kind of like what uh, what different parts of your website are about. So like they, they know that this is a reviews page. They know that like I can mark up the about page, and Google knows that it's an about page or a contact page. And it makes it easier for them to like um, basically crawl your stuff and trust you more. So it's really important that we do the uh, local business markup, the content markup, the about markup, and whatever else. So each page should have, should be in uh, schema in some way or the other. Is that what you're saying, basically? Right. So I mean, every page can pretty much be marked up. Like your your services can be marked up. Um, your blog posts can be marked up. Um, you can uh, do certain things like put breadcrumbs in your site, which uh, will help Google see like navigational elements on your website. Um, there's just a lot of really good stuff that comes from it that a lot of people don't utilize, um, especially for local okay. businesses. Um, the other thing that's important is your OG data. And you can see right now if somebody shares your website on social, it's just this. Um, so the problem with that is that uh, Google actually, I think, somewhat looks at social uh, signals. Um, and if your if your website's just sharing like random stuff, um, it's not going to make you look very authoritative. So I would uh, use something called uh, uh, it's a uh, it's a plugin called SSO Pro, which will actually let you change the OG data on your site, um, so you can start uh, basically marking this stuff up. Um, you do it after the fact. What do you mean? Like I'm confused as to uh, what do you mean by OG data and marking it up. So like similar to how you would uh, mark up uh, your pages with like title tags and meta descriptions and everything, um, right. if you go in here, you can actually see that there's certain elements that get pulled to the social platforms like uh, OG data you can see right here. So you can actually okay. change this and change what the images would say and uh, what the titles would be and all that stuff. Um, oh. And if you get a plugin called SSO Pro, it'll actually let you change it on the pages similar to how you would change the data with Yoast. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, also on the home page, you want to have a call to action above the fold. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. So. Um, because you're going to get a lot of extra conversions just from having that. Um, yeah. On the home page. So let's see what's getting indexed. So if we go into here, we type site colon. So we got seven pages indexed. You can see we got the privacy policy and all these other ones, which is great. Um, they're actually admitting some search results, and the reason for that is because they'll find like low value pages that shouldn't be really, I guess, indexed. Um, yeah. I guess the sitemap is fine. I don't know why. Yeah, I actually have a question about that. Um, I went to um, 
shoot, I forget the website, but I think maybe like SEO site checkup or something. Yeah. They actually, we actually have uh, three site maps. So should I be deleting two of them? Um, wait, you have three site maps? This site has three site maps, yeah. This site has three site maps? Submitted, apparently, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, but that's, yeah, I would just delete those out of, you're talking about in Search Console, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, so I would just delete the one out of Search, uh, the two out of Search Console that you don't have. Okay, um, gotcha. And you can see, like, certain things like this are being indexed, which is really odd. Um, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> um, so I would figure that out. I don't, okay. that's bizarre, I've never even seen that. Um, no index pages like this. Do you, do you recommend uh, no indexing certain pages um, if it's not like you know if it's not relevant to your uh, to what what product you're trying to sell or what your site's about stuff like that? Like yeah, so you would want to no index tags um, for like blog posts. Um, so here I'll just write it down: no index tags, author pages. Um, dates if you're not going for a new site and keep uh, categories indexed because you can actually rank categories okay. um, but I don't see any content marketing going on yet I don't think so I have to go into that in a second all right. yeah um, all right so we're gonna go back here boom um, let's make sure that this version redirects to the other version Looks like it does. Let's make sure you have a robots.txt file. All right, so yeah. Oh, here we go. So you got this sitemap.gz. So I think this is the. Uh, oh, I think this is why it's being indexed. Let me see this. Hold on. I think maybe because that's being allowed, it's showing that. I don't know. I've, I've never seen allow. Oh, actually, maybe that's OK. I don't know. That's so weird. Um, but these sitemaps, I think this is the compressed version of the sitemap, which is for some reason there's two sitemaps in here. OK, yeah. That's what I was confused. Yeah, OK. I would take that one out. OK, the .gz one. Yeah. No problem. You only you only need multiple sitemaps if you are like start pushing like 50,000 pages, I think. <laughs> Not selling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Um, okay, so let's go back here. Also, it looks like oh, never mind. I thought there was no fav icon. So, so no internal linking. Um, you want to figure out what are the different variations of keywords you want to rank for in your area, and that kind of comes from that keyword mapping I was talking about. And then what you start doing is you uh, set up internal linking from main pages okay. to those pages. And they actually pass value. So if the home page has a 22 page authority and it's linking to another page, it's going to be passing that authority. Um, gotcha. So you would do that in, these, in this link, in this text. Gotcha. Okay, um, cool. Also, since you're a local business, you want your name, address, phone number um, in all of the footer, in the footer or somewhere on the website. Yeah, okay. And that should be in schema? Um, no, because you only want your uh, schema and JSON LD on the home page. So you can use two types of schema. You can use microdata and you can use JSON LD. Microdata is what you can see visually on the website, and the JSON LD is the stuff that's only you can see in the code. And you don't want it on every web page. You just want it on the on the home page. Gotcha. All right, that's good to know. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, okay, so a lot of this content, like legal professionals. Um, these title tags are way too long. Yeah. So anything that exceeds 165, you want to make shorter. You, you have to do a lot of work on the uh, title, meta, and alt tags. Yeah, I mean it's just basic on page. Um, and the other stuff is that uh, like same thing, no link styles in here. Um, in terms of the actual content, uh, it's kind of limited. Um, multiple H1s. So same, sort of the same reoccurring theme. Um, as the other pages, as the home page. Um, 
Also, you can add like images in here and stuff, which are going to kind of help increase the relevancy of whatever you're trying to go for here. Um, okay, cool. And also, you don't really have a, a services page. So like I said, you want to have these other related pages to build out um, so that you can start ranking for them. So if you're going for like legal professionals, uh, wh wherever the city is, um, yep. Newtown, and then uh, there's like six other variations of that that people are searching. So like I don't know about this, but like if I were to look at like um, – like uh, SEO, and I was trying yeah. to rank locally, I would start building out related pages like uh, web design and social media and all this other stuff that people are searching. So I can get hits for that. <laughs> and it'll also improve the overall um, relevancy of my entire website, especially if I'm going to be doing internal linking from all those pages. Would you, and would you do that like area specific, or uh, like, like Newtown web design or Newtown uh, SEO, stuff like that? Or, or is that not necessary? So yeah, get, so uh, you would have your main service pages. Um, so it would be like whatever your main location is. Um, so if this was Newtown, uh, you're trying to rank that at the homepage. Then all of your services would also be replicating that. And it's called topical seeding because you're uh, basically seeding these uh, location keywords across all of your website. Um, and then you would actually also want to build out your related location pages after that. So if you have other, like if that's, if you're in a county and there's a bunch of other cities that are related to that, you would want to build out those pages too because of course you serve those other areas inside that county. Um, and there's going to be different searches for different cities inside of a county. Um, city landing pages. And so those ones would be the only ones that wouldn't be including the main keyword, which would be Newtown. Does that make sense? Yeah, so just, just so I'm clear, so from... From these pages, would I be having uh, links um, to the the page that you just described, or would they be their own separate links on the on the uh, the top of the uh, uh, screen there? Um, so what you would do is you would have all of your internal linking going to whatever's relevant to that page. So um, if you follow this model right here, I'll just put this link in here. Okay. Follow cool. this model. Um, you'll see that um, for any of the main pages, you're going to link to the most relevant pages from that main page. So um, think about it this way. Like if you're um, coming to the website um, as a user and you're going on the home page, you're going to want to figure out what are the other main services that these people provide. Um, right. And you only want to do uh, for the internal link silos, let me put this in here so you can remember, uh, two to three internal links and one to two external links, so to other websites that are relevant. Um, hopefully not the competition, per a thousand words. So that gives you the ability to link to like your top three most com uh, important services. And then from okay. your other pages, you would be linking to uh, the same thing. So uh, if somebody, just think about it, if somebody was to land on virus removal, what would be the most right. relevant pages that people would want to see? They would also want to see the computer repair page, which is the home page. Um, really what it's about is uh, not overcomplicating it and trying to link everywhere. Just try to link to the pages that are most important, um, and okay. and the things that are most, and at the same time, the things that are most uh, relative to what where you're at. Would you recommend just simplifying and just having just one service tab, and then just putting like legal professionals, insurers under that, or does it does it not matter? Yeah. So in an ideal world, you want your architecture to look like this. You have your home, your domain, slash services. And your okay. services page would be built out with your with like an overview of all your services, and then internal links going to the actual landing pages, which would be on the next part of the architecture, which would be you know name of oh. service. Gotcha. All right. Cool. Thanks. Um, and like I said, you can just replicate that website I was showing you. They do the exact same thing. Appreciate it. Yeah. No problem. Um, and you also want to be linking to it through the menu. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Yo, what's up? Huh? You're good. Cool. Does, all right. Sorry. Um, it's all good. So let's see these. What are these? I'm not even sure what that is. I would honest. take those stars out. They're not doing anything. Okay. Got stars because they're links that aren't um, going anywhere, and Google's gonna have to crawl the crawl those, and it's gonna look really weird. Yeah, I think they're trying to get fancy there. Yeah, because right now it's just uh, like I said, huh. it, Google's gonna hit this link, and then just like it's it, it's gonna look kind of like a loop. It's not good. Okay. Um, so yeah, everything else looks decent. I would set up uh, <laughs> conversion tracking online and offline so you can actually uh, track when people send a message and then also when they call you. 
Um, I use something called called tracking metrics. Yeah, I saw that on. Was that on your blog? Um, I think I may have seen that. Do you have an example uh, um, of the uh, of that? Yeah. Well, do you, you mean like how it works, or? Yeah, just briefly how how that works. Just to dumb it down for uh, for me. Um. Yeah. So here I'll show you right now. Um, and analytics. Here, I have it already. So uh, so basically, what happens is. Um, Let's take, uh, we'll take these guys. So this is one of our local clients. Um, so say somebody hits this off of Google. There's yeah. a script we put in here. Um, it's just a script, uh, JavaScript, um, which basically says if somebody hits this website off of Google, let's replace right. this phone number with a different tracking number for Google. And so if somebody calls it, it'll, um, it'll track a conversion for, um, for Google. And then if somebody hits the website off of a different uh, source, like say they hit it from Yelp, it'll track right. as a different phone number. So it'll be a different phone number for anything that they land on. So like Google has a different oh. number, Yelp has a different number. And then you can just integrate that with Google Analytics and it'll show you every time somebody calls. So the reason why you do that is because you can actually show what are the top sources they're getting conversions from. And then it also shows your value because like say they get 50 extra conversions a month from calls, but you're only tracking off uh, online conversion tracking, it's going to look right. like you're not really doing anything in comparison to if you were to have an extra 50 conversions coming in through phone calls. Wow, okay, cool. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah, um, I saw that. That's a, good, that's a good point. Yeah, it's super crucial. A lot of people don't even know like that you can do that stuff, but it's like just by doing that alone, you're going to provide so much more like insight and value. Um, Okay, so next thing is, let's see, let's see. Um, so you got ma the main page is done, kind of the ones we were talking about. Let's go into Screaming Frog. So, oops. So all these titles are duplicates, so we want to make those unique. Oops. Um, before you optimize the title tags, though, I would do the keyword mapping because there's no reason in optimizing them if we don't know what the keywords are going to be for these specific right. titles. Right. Um, So the status codes, these are all good, so we don't have to fix any bro broken links or redirects. Um, we kind of already mm -hmm. talked about these meta descriptions and yeah. the H1. Yeah. See, see, these are all like duplicates on, du I mean, on separate pages. So we just want to make sure, like I said, all the H1s are replicating the titles. Yeah, I saw them keyword stuff and duplicate all kinds of kind of the title and I think meta. Yeah. Um, and then if we go, can over you read that in the background? I can ask. Um, my wife to lower that. Are we good? Oh, say say it again. The TV's on in the background. Can you hear that? Or are we are we good? Oh, I can't hear anything. All right, good. Just checking. Um, so we're only missing five images with alt text. You can see how these are not really the correct file URLs. So you want these images to replicate what the images are at some point. Okay. Um, so you don't have to do that now, but at least I'll add the alt tags to them. Yep. Um, so we're gonna start looking at the offsite. That's all on page, and that's uh, that's literally like month one. Um, there's a lot more that starts to come up after uh, after you get a lot of that the basics dialed in. Okay. Um, okay, let's go into here. So we're gonna go to the Google location. Hopefully, I just go like this. Um. <clears throat> do that. What's that? They are registered, thankfully. Cool. So we just want to finish uh, getting these images filled out um, with uh, Google My Business optimization. So what that means is like uh, we want 3x photos of inside, outside, um, staff, uh, services, etc. You can use oh, these wow. on the website because um, Google actually uses these to uh, rank you. Um, and then make sure the images, uh, image file names, are replicating what they are. Gotcha. So, so like inside of office.jpg, that kind of thing. Just very literal. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
The next thing is we want to start doing review generation. So I'm going to use uh, I use something called Plepper, where it uh, you send this link to people and it gives them an auto five star uh, pop up. Oh sweet. Um, I'll show you. Oops. Is this the one you sent out to people to uh, to help get you to over a hundred reviews? Yeah, and it works really well. Um, and lot, with a lot of my clients, like I literally, I'll just go on their Facebooks and ask their friends to uh, leave them a review. Yeah, sweet. Um, just make sure you're not generating more than two to three reviews a day, and they're not from the same IP address. Yeah, I saw that a little gray action, gray hat. Um, and then also make sure you're responding to the reviews because you don't get the benefit until you do. Okay. You respond to every review then, I'm assuming? Uh, yeah, I try to. I get a lot though, so it's hard to respond to all of them. That's um, a good problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next thing is uh, you want to just make sure that your category is filled out correctly. So like if somebody's, um, if, if other people are ranking for your keywords and it's not legal services, you just want to change your category to that. Um, and also yeah. make sure that if uh, if you can add multiple categories, because uh, people don't. I mean, most people know this, but some people don't. Um, uh, you can actually rank for other uh, uh, categories just by adding multiple categories. Nice. Yeah, I saw that on Moz Local that um, most most times sites don't put enough categories in um, the uh, citations. Right. Um, so I'm assuming you already got it set up with Moz Local. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know about it and I, I checked it out. Uh, but if you had specific things in there that like aren't so obvious, I'll, you know, I'm more than happy to listen. All right, we'll check it out. So we got a 76% score. I have a quick question um, in terms of um, citations. I, I have a uh, another company um, that I actually started, uh, and it, it has a um, – we don't have a physical address. We have a P.O. box. Is that a big deal in Google's eyes? Like can I even – should I even bother filling out citations with what's a P.O. box? Is that – how does that work? Um, if you get caught with a P.O. box, they could remove your listing um, and all of the work that you put into it. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, if all of these are pointing to a P.O. box, um, I mean, some people They're... some people can get away with it for years. Um, but, uh... Yeah, this is just a general this, question about... This is, I how I, this is how I, like, replicate it, like, um, like... So like that's basically the situation you're in with the PO box. Oh damn, really? <laughs> All right. So, I mean, what if you're what if you're a startup and you're working from your, your home? Do you literally put your home address in, or do I do? Address? Okay. I've ranked I mean? I've ranked uh, tons of sites with home addresses. Um, I've even gone as far as hiring people locally on Craigslist, and then um, and then I'll just ask them to get their home address verified, and then. You know, even if they stop working for me, I still have them set as a service area, so it's not showing their address, and um, then I just have those locations forever. Gotcha. So it's, okay, so it's not a big deal. So I can I can do my home address. Yeah, just make sure you set it as a service area. Um, but like this iPhone repair site and even the computer repair site that's rank, ranking number one, these are both service areas. They're harder to rank as service areas, but um, with Google's new updates, like uh, the Possum update, it's easier to do. Um, you just have to be a little bit better than everybody else. Like, you already have to be a little bit better than everybody else, but with a service area, you have to be a, even a little bit better. Damn. Okay. Well, I have to keep. I get to keep reading then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, also, if you are going to change addresses before you build the citations, I would. Um, I would connect this to uh, the Moz API so that it starts pushing these changes out for you. Okay. Gotcha. So you. You almost never do them manually. You just you pretty much just just pay for uh, Moz Local for the most part. Um, at this point, I pretty much don't do anything manually. Right. Yeah. Well, not not you, but someone who has less to do. Oh, uh, oh, oh! I see what you're saying. Sorry. Um. Yeah. No. I, with so what I would do is um, 
I would uh, connect this to the API and then do the uh, manual pushes on the main local indexing platform. So I would do Google, Facebook, okay. Bing, and Yelp. Um, yeah. And then it, let them do everything else. All right, cool. Um, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, citations. Um, so assuming that you do do that, um, what would be the... Is this Pennsylvania? Yes, PA. Across okay. the country. Um, what would be the... Do you know the main keyword yet? Uh, I actually, have, we haven't gone through the research, but I mean, it would be the main keyword should be uh, independent medical evaluation. It's short for IME, but I googled IME and it doesn't come up like you would think it, it would. But I mean, like for for Delaware, do you know what it would be? Uh, it would probably be uh, the keywords would probably still be IME because that's that, that's the main thing he does: is independent medical evaluations. Yeah, or exams or evaluations, yeah, either. See, but it's not showing up with anything locally. He's in PA. There we go, cool. So. Well, at least you're in luck, because your competition here sucks. I mean, they, yeah. they are They're not terrible. Really, yeah. Um, this is one of those things where if you did it right, you could probably rank within... Oh no, I put in the wrong one. Um, probably within a couple months, which is a oh, lot faster than, sweet. yeah. Oh, that would look pretty good on my part. Is it Delaware Water Gap? Uh, no, it should be um, like Newtown Square. Newtown PA right there, I spot. Well, that's loading. Um, <laughs> this is totally the wrong one. Oh, man. Hold on. Let me try one more. I'll try one more. No problem. There we go. All right, so this is a competition. You can see all their citations are pretty low. Um, okay. This is good What's for us. What's a good number for citations, just in, just in general, just for in this my... In this industry, probably like 90. Okay. Um, and that's assuming that you're doing at least like 15 hyper-local. Okay. Um, and then at least probably 10 niche-specific. Um, I have somebody who white labels citations if you ever need help with that. Yeah, shoot me their um, email address if you if you want. Okay. Or put, you can put it in whatever. Um, all right, I, where are we at right now? It's like, it says we've only been doing this for 20 minutes. Do I believe that? Uh, um, good question. Oh, that's I a good question. Well, we kind of started before the stream. Um, I was just like, I have pretty much everything I need for this to put together the top 10. Um, I don't know if that's cool with you. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that, that's, um, that's important that maybe you could throw in the email, or do we hit it pretty much everything? Well, no, I'm saying like I have the ability to put together the top, because there's a, uh, I do the top 10, which is the things that you should focus on first. Ah, uh, okay. Um, one of the things though is you do want to start some sort of social signals. I use like a $10 buffer subscription um, and it just auto pushes your, uh, like you can do like reviews, you can do whatever you want. Um, and that way at least you get to start driving stuff to your website or uh, social signals to your website okay. um, on your different social channels. And then also I would uh, start doing like tar top 10 lists for your area and niche. So it's literally okay. just like it's literally just like top ten, uh, top ten area, quote unquote area plus niche. <laughs> That's literally okay. all it is. <laughs> um, but Not if you true. start doing some of those, uh, you can start ranking for keywords pretty fast uh, just with content. 
Um, and then, of course, you just put yourself at the top and then don't put the contact info for anybody else. Um, it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous, but it's totally true. It, it, it works really well. Um, okay. Not endless. Well, I mean, just like if you look at like anything like iPhone repair or whatever, in any area, um, look at this. Best iPhone repair in Santa Barbara. Top 10. Like It's like something that Yelp does everywhere. Um, okay. So if you know Yelp's doing it, you, you can pretty much replicate it. it you just don't want to reinvent the wheel. If, it's, if somebody else is doing it and it's working, then you might as well just do it. And I know tons nice. of people who are doing this with like web design companies and stuff, and they're pulling in like hundreds of extra freaking uh, uniques a month because of these articles. Um, so top so 10. The, yeah, go so ahead. The, just, just, just so I'm clear, so they're literally just doing blog posts of top 10 lists? Pretty much, with yeah. Their, with, okay. with area plus niche. Gotcha. Um, okay, so on page basics, um, you're going to want to do, uh, let's see, um, your title tag, optimizations, so titles, metas, eight, uh, heading tags, um, alt tags, well, you know, all that stuff. Yep, all that. Um, the next thing you want to do is um, I would I would probably do the... Uh, the site, uh, not the citations, the uh, uh, moving the address and connecting it to the API because you want to do that as fast as possible. Okay. You don't want to, I mean, the chances of you getting the, like getting found out like is not very not high at all. It's like probably like a one percent chance, maybe even lower. But um, I would just do it now. Um, move address and get changes pushed through Moz. Um, also, the sooner you can do this, the sooner you can start building citations, which are a huge, uh, going to be a huge factor. Moving the address meaning changing it to a different address other than a PO box. Oh yeah, gotcha. Yes, yeah, it's it's, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I'll do that. No problem. Um, the next thing I would do is I would start trying to generate um, two to three reviews at least every couple of days. Okay. And I'm like I was saying, if you just get like a list of people, um, I get a lot of my reviews from Facebook groups. I just offer information and then I ask them for a review. Um, gotcha. Then I would do Google My Business opti uh, main local indexing optimizations, local indexing platform optimizations. Um, meaning. So meaning like uh, get all the images dialed in. Um, with correct uh, uh, categories and all that stuff. Um, I, like I said, a lot of the stuff is going to be pushed through Moz, but um, uh, Google My Business is the most important one to start optimizing. Okay. Because Google uh, Moz is going to pull from Google My Business, and if you don't have the um, <clears throat> the uh, picture set up, it's not going to push those to any other platform. So actually, I'm going to say do that first. Okay. Um, the next thing that I would do is work on uh, the internal linking um, and uh, and uh, content uh, landing pages. Well, actually, you know what? That'll be number six. I'm going to say uh, build out main landing pages um, for services yeah. with correct uh, URL architecture and uh, then set up related location pages. Um, and then work on the internal link silos in the content. Um, no, that was <laughs> internal link silos and externally linking. So just just so I'm clear, uh, number five, build out main landing pages for services. Um, does that mean uh, basically um, have like a like a like a service page with a drop down menu type thing, or does that mean just um, like increase the content on the existing service page with like pictures, like you said, or um, what exactly 
So like I said, um, you'd want to make it so that it's in sort of this sort of uh, uh, architecture, where it would be the main service page, and then you gotcha. have your other related services pages underneath in the URL structure as well. Gotcha. OK. Um, no problem. Um, and then, oh, I forgot to put in the reviews. Make sure you respond. Oh, yeah, respond to all of them. Uh, the next thing I would do is get the, uh, um, what is it, the uh, schema markup dial in and the OG data. Um, and like I said, I can I can help you with any of this stuff that might be more technical. Just let me know. Um, yeah, see that. And then um, then after all that stuff, I would push the citations. Okay. I'll just grab this. Um, then I would start the content marketing. Yeah. Um, and then I would create some sort of controllable asset. So if you're going to be doing content marketing, um, yeah. make sure that you're collecting something from them, like funneling them. Uh, like lead magnets, landing pages, stuff like that? Um, so for the content, you can uh, offer specials by funneling them into a Facebook group, um, which you can collect more reviews from afterwards, um, or an email list, or both. I do both. Okay. Um, but it's really important that you start creating controllable assets for your traffic because if, for instance, they're not happy and they're like, oh, we're not getting enough traffic this month, you can just like say you had a group of like 2,000 people in it or whatever, um, you can start doing special offers and stuff and start doing like click funnels and bringing in like <coughs> 15 conversions in like literally like a week or two. Wow. Okay. Um, which is why I'm so big on content because, like I said, um, a lot of the stuff I do, it's just like I, I just put the stuff out there now. Um, I don't even have to do any advertising because um, I have so many controllable assets. Oh, nice. Wow, so that's, that's basically what you were saying earlier. Um, real quickly on the um, OG data and the, and the schema markup, will you just briefly further explain that? Um, yeah, so um, like a lot of it's pretty simple. You just get certain plugins. Like um, if you type in schema on YouTube, schema markup 2017, I have a tutorial for it. Um, oh, okay, and then cool. same thing with the OG data. Um, if you type in, uh, I think it's OG data 2017 or something. Um, yeah, so I mean, all this stuff's easy. It's just like sounds complicated because it's like special terms that people don't really talk about. Um, but a lot of it's literally just plug and play. You just download a plugin and then you just go in and set it up. Sweet. Oh, that's right. Okay. Gotcha. Just like a Yoast plugin or something like that. All right. Yeah, pretty much the exact same thing. Cool. Um, awesome, man. This is great. Yeah, so I will send this over to you. Um, and yeah, if you need any help with this stuff, just let me know um, and I can uh, uh, help you out. Yeah, dude. Chase, appreciate it, man. This is huge. Mm -hmm. um, if I can help you in any way further uh, by referring people or stuff like that, I'd be more than happy to. Yeah, actually, um, anybody who refers uh, clients to me, um, I will split the uh, roadmap and then the next level, if they buy like a package from me, I'll split the first month of that. So if they buy like yeah. a $3,000 package, that'll be 1500 bucks for you. Is that the, uh, is this, is that the next level after, after this? Uh, the next level, of... the lowest one I have is 750. Um, for like getting and that would that would dial in probably like half of this stuff um, and then like I said a lot of this stuff once you get it dialed in there's like another level up from this um, in terms of the roadmap because then you start looking at like conversion rate optimization and a bunch of other yeah. crazy stuff cool man and uh, and so do you how, how long is that is that like a couple days is that like a week does that uh, do you help with that like yeah what is so normally it only takes like a week, um, but because I've scaled so fast this month, like literally doubled in clients, it's really hard for me to get to this um, like okay. right away. The earliest I could probably get this started would be um, maybe next Wednesday. Gotcha. So you're at least a week or two behind. Oh, I gotcha. All right. Yeah. We just have so many people that were, have signed up this month that it's like, um, honestly, I should probably not even take anybody else until next month. 
cool, man. Good for you. It's yeah, awesome. it's pretty exciting. Awesome, man. Uh, cool. Are we at the end of the road here pretty much? Yeah, so I'm going to turn off this video, um, and then now you have it to watch um, if you'd like. I'll just turn this off. Thanks for coming by, by the way, SEO friends. Yeah, man. Thanks for everything. Appreciate it. It's awesome.